Hi students, welcome to Section Young Lectures and welcome to our new playlist on the design of shield structures. In uh, today's class, we shall see the design of built-up or compound beams, which are design, uh, which are the designs of the laterally supported beams, right? Which are subjected to low shear, low shear forces. We will see a few solved problems. In the previous class, we have seen the design of laterally unsupported beams. And those were the flexural members, uh, and we found out the design bending strength. Uh, which were subjected to low shear force. We have seen uh, one or two problems, right? Uh, as per the demonstrate method, IS 800 2007. I hope you enjoyed the discussions there. Then don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, comment, and turn on notification for our YouTube channel. Before we see the actual discussion, let us see the brief profile of the speaker that is by Dr. D. Rupesh Kumar. Obtained my BTEC uh, civil engineering from Nagarjun University in 1994, MTech section engineering from JN to Hyderabad in 2000, and PhD section engineering from JN to Hyderabad in 2009. I am presently uh, working as a professor of Department of Civil Engineering, University College of Engineering, Osman University, Hyderabad, Telangana State. I have an experience of 27 years after 7 years is in industry and 20 years is in teaching at graduate and postgraduate levels. Right? My research areas include reinforcement and concrete design, structural shield design, structural analysis, management analysis, earthquake engineering, bridge engineering, structural optimization. I have published 45 research papers in national as well as international journals and conferences, organized three international conferences and 11 national conferences and workshops, attended 43 workshops, visited two countries, delivered 13 guest lectures and edited three books, supervising 14 PhD scholars, supervised 30 ME thesis. I am actively involved in various consultancy works that are offered by the department and completed over 770 design proof checks and 150 designs of RCC, steel, composite, low-rise, high-rise, multi short buildings and road as well as rail bridges. Right? And now let us see what we will be discussing in today's class student, right? that is how, uh, the beams which are subjected to uh, uh, heavier forces, heavier forces. Or let me go. Let me go to the discussion side. Why? Why these um, uh, compound beams are required? First of all, right. And therefore, let us see uh, the uh, heading. Heading as uh, the design of built-up sections, right? Design of built-up sections, right? Or that of the uh, uh, plated beams. Plated beams are compound beams, right? Like this, right? However, uh, why these are required? Why these are required? Well, let me show now the schematic student right? uh, just now shown that if the span, the span of the beam is large, right? Now we can see that uh, if the span of the beam is large, then obviously there will be heavy bending moment at the mid span, and uh, as well as there will be heavy shear force at the support, heavy bending moment at the mid span, as well as heavy shear force at the support, right? And because of which. If I find out the section modulus, the section modulus is uh, too large. However, in uh, uh, as per the uh, steel tables or SP61, you do have only limited depths of the sections that are available. That is the heaviest section is ISWB 600, right? More than 600 depth uh, we don't have. Therefore, if the section modulus to be furnished is more than that which is already uh, which can be furnished by the heaviest section, heaviest section. Uh, by any Indian standard rolled steel beam sections, be it be ISHB, RBSB, ISWB, then there is no other option but to go with a built up section, right? That is all. And the second reason is that if at all there is a, a height res restriction like this here, I do have almost let us say this is a steel floor where I, I uh, don't want to have a clear height uh, less than 2.4 meter. 2.4 meter in which case uh, uh, I have a headroom restriction here therefore in, in which case I cannot go with uh, the larger depths of the beams therefore in such a case there is no other option but to provide smaller beams smaller beams with the cover plates therefore in such case also I will be requiring the built up beams therefore these are the two two uh, 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 instances where I require a built up beam like this a built up beam like this therefore what now we'll do is uh, will uh, in such cases in such cases uh, these uh, these uh, regular beams these regular uh, uh, beams which are available in market right in the standard roll shield beam sections ISWB or ISHB they cannot furnish the required section modulus required section modulus therefore in such cases we'll be providing to that a cover plate either one cover plate or, or maybe two right this is how 
uh, is a I section, right? To which I may be providing either one cover plate or two cover plates. That for such cases, those beams are now called the plated, right? Uh, cover plated sections, right? Or the compound sections are built up section. That is how it is looking like this. Right? This is the uh, web. This is the flange. This is what I am adding one cover plate or which is called the flange plate. Therefore, these are what plated built up sections. Plated built up sections. Right? And that is how this cover plate I have just added to this Indian standard rolled steel beam section, right? And which are connected uh, obviously in two rows by the bolts like this right here uh, to the left one row to the right another row even at the bottom you can see there are they are seen in two rows in two rows right and uh, that uh, in cross section it looks like this right therefore they are folded in two rows to this uh, indian standard rolled steel beam section right once we examine this uh, student right how these need to be designed there is a next question right therefore that is what just now i have shown that this is a bolted bolted uh, built up plated beam section, bolted, plated, uh, built up section or compound section, right? Or sometimes we may also be providing the cover plate, the cover plate wherein that will be welded. Therefore, in such case, they are what called welded, plated, built up sections, right? Uh, please make a note that at the top of the um, uh, width of the width of the cover plate should be less than the width of the flame. Width of the flame, it cannot be more, right? If all it is more, then obviously uh, uh, the stress concentration may occur. However, at the bottom, however, at the bottom, you please see that uh, that the uh, width of the web, uh, sorry, width of the flame should be less than that of the cover plate, or at least the cover plate uh, uh, width should be at least equal to that of the flange plate, so that entire load will be uniformly distributed right uniformly distributed and connected by means of the wells like this connected by means of the fillet wells on either side on either side therefore accordingly that is what referred to as a welded built up uh, plated built up section or compound section right then uh, how to design these cover plates students right let the thickness of the flange plate or cover plate be tf and it is let its width is equal to b Therefore, <clears throat> then we will say that the motor finish of the flange plate uh, th that is required is equal to IA. IA is equal to motor finish uh, for the entire uh, bending moment required. We will uh, we'll find out from which now I will say that uh, what is the motor finish furnished by this um, I section alone. I section alone. From which now I will get uh, what is the motor finish to be furnished by the uh, cover plates. Or that of the flange plates. Therefore, I A is equal to I P rec minus I I Z. Or accordingly, even if I divide with uh, H by 2 H by 2, now what I'll get is the section modulus of the plates required is equal to uh, the section modulus required for the entire built-up section minus section modulus furnished uh, section modulus furnished by the beam section alone Z P Z Z P Z for the rolled steel beam section rolled steel se beam section right however now we will say that motor of inertia of these plates cover plates is equal to two times motor of inertia about its own axis about its own axis that need to be transferred to the cg cg of this built up section therefore i a prime plus area of these plates multiplied by h by 2 because they are there at a distance of h by 2 therefore that whole square however the amount of inertia of the plates compared to the top this depth heavy depth can be neglected i a prime may be neglected therefore neglecting that smaller values now i can say that i a amount of inertia of the plates is approximately equal to two times the area of these uh, plates multiplied by h by 2 approximately therefore now rearranging the terms now i will get i a by h by 2 is nothing but the section modulus uh, uh, section modulus of these Flange plates are that of the cover plates is approximately equal to now 2 by 2 gets cancelled. Area of these plates multiplied by H is approximately right. Therefore, the once I get the section mode is required, now I'll say that area of the plate required is equal to how much is nothing but the section mode is required divided by H H approximately. However, uh, now assuming some uh, thickness, we propose the breadth or However, we will be fixing the breadth because that should be num at least right numerically equal to width of the flange BF. Therefore, if I know that width of the flange, 
width of the flange only unknown is equal to thickness of the flange is equal to how much that is equal to area of the flange plates required divided by that b that is how we will be <coughs> designing these cover plates student right i hope you understood the design process right the rest of the design is same right once i propose that then i'll find out the uh, bending movement and i'll uh, check for the shear check for buckling uh, check for crippling and check for deflection all this check will be there as usual as we have seen in the previous class also right now let us uh, move to the design problem right <coughs> this is a design a steel beam section supporting a roof of a big hall for the following data and carry out the necessary checks right use fe 14 grade steel and the clear span the clear span is equal to 6.5 meter and the end bearings the end bearings is equal to 150 mm 150 mm and the center to center of these beams is 3 meters and imposed load imposed load of the beam is equal to 10 kiloton per meter square and the dead load including the sulfate of this beam is equal to 4 kiloton per meter square and there is a restriction on the beam there is a restriction on the beam that the depth should be restricted to 375 mm only right therefore now also what is given is the beam is laterally supported throughout laterally supported throughout right that is how the problem is given student right now let us see what is the given data for fe 14 grade steel right uh, ultimate strength of the steel is equal to 14 m mega pascals and wheel stress is equal to 250 mega pascals and from table 5 of ias 800 and now i have partial safety factor for the uh, governed by the yielding gamma m naught is equal to 1.1 1 .1 and partial safety factor governed by the ultimate stresses ultimate stresses gamma m1 is equal to 1.25 from page number 30 um, th pay, from page number 30 table number 5 right and also from <coughs> sorry right from uh, same uh, IS 800 uh, 2007 from table 4 page number 29 from page number 29 let me go to that page number 29 of IIS 800 student right therefore here partial safety factors for the loads are also given gamma f for limit states right uh, 1 for dead load and live load uh, then uh, partial safety factor gamma f is equal to 1.5 times dead load and 1.5 times live load whereas for limit state of serviceability you please see that uh, one times dead load and one times live load only one times live load only therefore these are the uh, partial safety factor for limit state of strength as well as the uh, serviceability right then however uh, uh, here what is now given in the problem is that uh, uh, the data is given saying that uh, this is having a clear span of 6.5 meter 6.5 meter which is laterally supported but however there is no data whether uh, is it uh, simply supported or fixed however in the absence of data code says that it should be the center to center center to center of the distance of the beam therefore now as per that code specification now I have uh, effective span is equal to clear span now let me show this plus two times the end bearing by two which is equal to 6.5 plus 0.15 it works out 6.65 6.65 let me show this right let me show uh, like this right not this much right? Mm. let me go back to uh, this uh, schematic right uh, I'll show this right yes right this is how what is now given is just 6.5 meter is only given student right now here i am assuming right the end uh, is already given in the problem that this end bearing is equal to 150 mm here 150 mm therefore this 6.5 plus 0.15 by 2 plus 1.15 by 2 it now works out 6.65 meter and what is also given is uh, the beam is uh, laterally supported right how the lateral restraint can be provided the other day we also elaborately wherein if at all uh, the compression flange is embedded into the concrete or if at all it is provided by means of uh, metal decking which is provided by means of the shear studs like this right now i'm showing that example right if at all it is provided by shear uh, studs uh, over the metal decking over which the concrete will be poured then in which case the compression flange is laterally restrained laterally restrained right even we have seen the other day these are uh, that is of the actual uh, buckling phenomena of the uh, beam student right however how to make this uh, um, flange flange uh, um, uh, laterally restrained these we already seen that compression place is embedded into the concrete or it is uh, provided by means of the shear studs or even the beams are connected by means of the braces right or even these are the array, other arrangements we have elaborately discussed in the previous class you just see 
how it can be made laterally supported right now once uh, we see uh, that this is laterally restrained laterally restrained then i need to calculate i need to calculate what is that load coming on to coming on to the beam therefore what is the data given is that uh, that let me see this data right now let me examine that data student right now uh, that uh, what is also the data given is that uh, the center to center of spacing of these beams is equal to 3 meters or let me go to this figure right therefore that is how uh, these beams are spaced right every 3 meter right after that 3 meter another beam is there right that is how uh, the center to center spacing of the beams is 3 meter whereas the span of this beam is equal to 6.5 meter clear span this is what the span of the beam which is supported in between two columns right between two columns are in between beam to beam right beam to beam right this is what called 6.5 meter whereas this is what from one beam to the other beam is 3 meter therefore the load coming on to this beam each of the beam is equal to 3, 3 divided by 2 1.5 meter from the left of this uh, uh, support and um, uh, beam and to the right of the support 3 by 2 right 1.5 therefore this 1.5 plus 1.5 3 meter from 3 meter uh, the load will be coming in the form of intensity of the load which will be converted in terms of UDL to get the design shear forces to get the design shear forces now let us uh, see that uh, next abiding as the design shear forces design shear forces the next abiding therefore the, uh, the factored dead load however in the problem what is given is uh, it is uh, uh, subjected to a dead load intensity including the sulfate as 4 kN per meter square now there is no uh, data given i am assuming that these are the uh, service loads therefore the factored dead load including the sulfate is equal to just now we have seen the factor of safety for dead load and load load is equal to 1.5 that much probably 4 4 uh, it works out 6 kN per meter square as well as the imposed load or live load is given as 10 kN per meter square therefore the factored imposed load is equal to 1.5 multiplied by 10 15 kN per meter square therefore the UDL uh, uniformly distributed load on the beam which is equal to WU is nothing but dead load plus live load which is 6 plus 15 21 multiplied by spacings of the beams spacings of the beams like this one right at every 3 meter 3 meter therefore that now works out say 21 multiplied by 3 21 multiplied by 3 it now works out say a value 63 kilo per meter student as udl as udl on the beam as udl on the beam therefore the design bending movement the design bending movement assuming the beam to be simply supported as w l square by 8 w l square by 8 therefore w u is 63 multiplied by 6.65 whole square by 8 that works out say 348.25 kN meter. Similarly, the design shear force at the support maximum shear force will be there at the support VU is equal to WU L divided by 2. Half the load will go to the left support like this, right? Half the uh, uh, load will go to the left support and half the load will go to the right support WU L by 2, right? Therefore, that now works out say a value, say a value uh, 209.48 kN meter. Therefore, here uh, at the mid span, I do have maximum bending movement student. Now you can say at the mid span, even there is a, a lateral restraint provided to the compression flange also. Not, not only lateral restraint is provided to the tension flange, but also the lateral direction to all these beams. A restraint is provided to the compression, compression flange also. Please make a note, right? Therefore, uh, once we get the design forces, now uh, let us start. Uh, the uh, design first i need to get uh, a trial section modulus therefore i am there in the heading as trial section i am fixing some trial section right from is 800 2007 class 8.2.1.2 page number 53 page number 53 let me re revisit that page number 53 student right is 800 right uh, page 53 53 right therefore there now here this is the codal specification pertain to laterally supported beam from page number 53 right this we have elaborately seen the other day therefore it now says that the design bending strength of a section which is not susceptible for web buckling under shear force uh, before yielding where d by tw less than 67 times epsilon right shall be obtained using this formula and it says that when it is uh, the factored design shear force does not exceed 0.6 vd where vd is the design shear strength of the cross section then MD is given by beta B multiplied by ZP, FI divided by gamma M naught and this shall be less than 1.2 Z 
EFY divided by gamma M0 in case of simply supported beams as well as it should be less than 1.5 ZE FI divided by gamma M0 for cantilever beams where beta B is equal to 1 for plastic sections and compact section and beta B is equal to the ratio of the elastic section modulus to the plastic section modulus for semi-compact section uh, where ZP and ZE are the plastic and elastic section moduli respectively, respectively right. Once I examine this, uh, now uh, let us uh, uh, assume that the section is a plastic section. To start with, I am assuming so. Therefore, um, now my assumption is that beta B is equal to 1. Therefore, this formula into this formula, if I substitute that section modulus, uh, plastic section modulus required, ZP required. But this section is equal to MU divided by FI divided by gamma M0 because M is equal to FZ, F is FI divided by gamma M0 as per this formula multiplied by section modulus required, ZP required is equal to substituting the numeric values 348.25246 multiplied by 1.1 divided by FI. Now I will get 1523.3 mm cube section modulus is required for the trial section. However, here the depth of the beam is restricted to 375 mm because of the headroom restrictions. I already told in the initial discussion, right? This is how the initial restrictions, right? Headroom restrictions, 375 mm only. Therefore, there is no other option but to design a built-up section, right? If there is no restriction, I can uh, I can provide 1523. I can uh, choose uh, some ISMB or ISWB uh, section like that. But uh, because there is a restriction, therefore there is no other option but to choose a lower beam depth not more than 375 mm therefore i am trying with iswb 350 because that 350 even if i add one or two cover plates one or two cover plates of say some uh, some 8 or 10 mm then also 10 plus 10 20 right 20 plus 350 not greater than 375 therefore it is okay in such case also then that will be okay that is what my assumption right therefore i'll proceed with iswb 350 at a rate of 558.19 newton per meter right therefore if i go to if i go to the page number 138 138 as well as sp uh, iswb6 uh, iswb350 right therefore i'm just uh, i'm there in sp61 1964 iswb350 at a rate of 56.9 kg per meter it is furnishing an area of 7250 mm square and its width is equal to the, sorry, the depth of the section is equal to 350 and width of the flange, width of the flange is equal to 250 and thickness of the flange is equal to 11.4 and thickness of the web is equal to 8 mm and moment of finish about the major axis is equal to 15,521.7 cm cube and about the minor axis IYY is equal to 1175.9 cm cube. The radius of variation about the major axis means ZZ axis is equal to 14.63 cm and about the minor axis RYY is equal to 4.03. Therefore, I have noted down this from uh, SP61. Similarly, I will note down the uh, uh, section uh, uh, ZPZ, ZPZ from is uh, from IS 800 page number 138. Let me go to that page number 138. Student, right? therefore, the, from that uh, ISW, IS WB uh, 350, IS WB 350, right? Now, uh, let me see this, right? Yes, here I do have IS WB 350, IS WB 350 is there, right? Which is at a rate of 56.9. Therefore, now I'll note down what is the uh, uh, plastic uh, uh, section modulus furnished by that section right from table 46 from table 46 of is 800 in annex h of is 800 of is 800 then if i just noted down all the relevant properties from 1 sp61 as well as 2 from the is 800 table 46 therefore um, these are the relevant properties, right? H is equal to 350, breadth of the flange is equal to 200. This is what I noted down. And the root radius is equal to 12 mm. Therefore, the depth of the web, right? Excluding that of the thickness of the flange as well as the root radius is equal to H, or it is notated by D also. Uh, sorry, it is notated by D, which is equal to overall depth, overall depth, right? 350 minus two thicknesses of the flanges, right? 11.4 plus root radius. Uh, 12 mm. mm. Therefore, now it works out say 303.2 mm student right and this we already noted down moment of inertia about major and minor axis and plastic section modulus as well as elastic section modulus from IS 800 also right therefore 
once I note down, once I note down, you please see that the section modulus which is required is 1523.3. But how much section modulus is furnished by this IS WB350, right? It's just 995.5. Approximately centimeter cube, but which is much less than 1523. Therefore, rest of the section modulus need to be provided by the cover plates. By the cover plates, therefore, there is my I section. I section is there. Therefore, I want to add a cover plate like this. Hence, next abiding is design of these cover plates. The design of these cover plates, right? Therefore, the uh, plastic section modulus. Uh, required is much less than this one therefore we need to provide additional cover plates compulsorily right one or two or at maximum three cover plates that's it not more than three cover plates student right now therefore the plastic section modulus of the plates required z a is equal to just now i told that total section modulus required z p requ minus the section modulus provided by the beam alone iswb 350 alone right hence that works out say 1523.3 10 to power 3 minus 995.5 approximately it works out say 536.8 10 to the power 3 mm cube that of the plates therefore the area of these cover plates required a a requ a a requ is equal to the section modulus required divided by uh, depth because we know that uh, the uh, section modulus is the first moment of area therefore area multiplied by that perpendicular distance approximately the perpendicular distance is h now it is not exactly still we have not decided what is the thickness therefore i am saying approximately the perpendicular distance between the center of this flange to center of the flange is h therefore lever arm is equal to h hence substituting into this now i will get the area of these plates required is equal to 15 uh, 34 mm square approximately like this right therefore uh, now I am assuming that the width of the cover plates is equal to the width of width of the flange itself. However, the width of the flange is three uh, two hundred mm, which is equal to BF. Therefore, if width of the cover plates is decided as B, this is two hundred mm. Therefore, let the thickness of the flange required is equal to how much? Therefore, that now works out. TF or TP required is equal to AA required divided by B, or say 1534 divided by 200, approximately 7.67 mm is required. However, this should not be less than 6 mm if, if at all it is exposed to open environment. However, um, in, uh, in market, the thicknesses are available only after 6, 8 mm is only available. Therefore, R say 8 mm, R say 10 mm, that is left to you, right? Therefore, I'll provide. Are provided 8 mm thickness like this. One cover plate only is sufficient, right? Therefore, the plastic section modulus of the, this built up section, right? This built up section is nothing but ZPZ is equal to the plastic section modulus of this uh, beam plus the area of this uh, cover plate and the perpendicular distance, the lever arm, the lever arm. Therefore, now that works out, say, that works out, say, the uh, plastic section modulus of this beam ZPZ is equal to 995.5 uh, 10 to the power 3 and uh, the uh, area area of this cover plates is equal to 200 multiplied by its thickness is equal to 8 mm that multiplied by now the perpendicular distance is 350 plus 8 by 2 8 by 2 therefore 358 358 right therefore now it works out say uh, ZPZ provided is equal to uh, uh, sorry 1568.3 10 to power 3 mm cube which is just greater than 1523.3 10 to power 3 mm cube therefore it is okay it is okay therefore we need to provide 15 34 approximately but we have provided uh, we have sorry i am sorry student the section modulus are required uh, that uh, required is uh, uh, required is um, uh, this uh, 1523.3 10 to power 3 mm cube but however i am providing for this built up section 1568 centimeter cube which is greater than 1523 centimeter cube therefore this section is okay therefore the depth of the built up section is equal to 350 plus one cover plate plus one cover plate each of 8 mm therefore it works out say 366 because 350 plus 16 366 which is just less than 375 mm that restriction was there therefore it is okay it means we can now further proceed with 
the other checks whether it can carry required bending moment or not or required shear strength or not that those checks will do that for now let us uh, proceed for the further calculations ne next subheading is the section classification right then the stress ratio epsilon is equal to uh, if i go to this uh, 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 is 800 page number 18 page number 18 stress ratio is equal to square root of 250 divided by fi fi for steel is equal to 250 therefore it is equal to 1 it is equal to 1 right now let me go to this page number 18 of uh, is 800 i of is 800 let me go to that uh, quickly student right? 18 and then in page number 18 yes right limiting width to uh, thickness ratio however i am there in the built up section right therefore this uh, epsilon is equal to square root of 250 divided by fi just now we have seen right i do have a built up section a built up section therefore for that uh, built up section now what the code says what the code says is that right uh, now let me check right yes uh, uh, rolled shield right uh, not this one right uh, even mm, there is no provision for the built up section therefore directly let, let us see outstanding outstanding element of the compression flange directly that of the compression flange right for the rolled steel section and for the welded welded section for the welded section right even let me check whether there is a, a built up section right mm, no right uh, it is not given it is not given therefore i'll simply proceed with that of the first one right therefore for this rolled steel section b by tf should be if at all it is less than 9.7 9.4 uh, epsilon then that uh, that is what called the plastic section class 1 or if it is uh, just less than 10.5 epsilon and greater than 9.4 then that is class 2 or compact section and if it is less than 15.7 greater than 10.5 then it is class 3 or semi compact section for the flange for the flange right and similarly for the uh, for the uh, web also if it is a d by t w is less than 84 uh, times epsilon then plastic section and just less than 105 uh, epsilon then it is compact section and if it is just less than 126 and greater than 1, 105 epsilon then that is semi compact section once i know uh, once i note this uh, uh, college specification student now let me see let me see uh, the calculation therefore the out, outstanding outstand of this flange outstand of this flange is equal to b is equal to bf by 2 however bf is already uh, is equal to uh, 200 mm that divided by 2 means 100 mm that divided by thickness of this flange is equal to 11.4 uh, it works out say 8.7 8.7 it is much less than 9.4 epsilon 9.4 epsilon just now we have seen right and what is d by tw uh, we have already calculated depth of this uh, uh, web web it was uh, 303.2 mm 303.2 mm that divided by thickness of the uh, web 8 mm it works out say 37.9 which is much less than 84 times epsilon therefore as per this uh, as per uh, this is 800 right therefore it is less than 9.4 as well as less than uh, eight, uh, eight, uh, 84 it is less than 84 means entire web has totally plastified it is less than 9.4 times epsilon for the flanges means entire flange has plastified therefore the entire section is a plastic section entire section has plastified therefore our assumption is true because we already assumed beta is equal to 1 in the calculation in the initial calculation that assumption is true that assumption is true therefore now we are in line with the assumption next if the assumption is true also also uh, now as per this class 8.2.1.1 page number 53 if d by t which is 37.9 is less than 67 times epsilon that just now we have seen in the initial discussion that then shear buckling check need not be done shear buckling check need not be done right and let me go to that page number uh, 53 uh, 53 uh, therefore this is how that page number 53 right the web buckling under the shear before yielding means d by tw less than 67 times epsilon need not be done need not be done right therefore once i know this color specification now let me check next what is the shear uh, check for the shear strength check for the shear strength right therefore as per this class 800 2007 uh, class 8.4 page number 59 let me go to the page number 59 student right at a weaker pace right mm, page number 59 right yeah yes i am there in page number uh, 59 right and let me go uh, at a quicker pace right 
Yes, I'm there in that uh, page number 59. Uh, page number 59. Factor the design shear force. V should be less than VD, where VD is equal to V0 by uh, gamma M0, where VN, uh, VN is equal to nominal plastic shear resistance of the web under pure shear is equal to VP. VP is equal to AV multiplied by FI W divided by root 3, where AV is the shear area for I sections and channel sections. Uh, if at all subjected to the bending about the major axis then but hot rolled sections it is AV is nothing but the depth of the section H multiplied by thickness of the web therefore from these quarter specifications if I substitute the numeric values now I'll get the design shear strength VD is equal to AV FI uh, AV is nothing but H multiplied by TW FI W divided by root 3 multiplied by gamma M naught therefore substitute the numeric values 350 multiplied by 8 350 is the depth of the section multiplied by 8 is the thickness of the web uh, thickness of the web and depth of the web that multiplied by fy 250 divided by root 3 multiplied by 1.1 that whole divided by 10 to power 3 it now works out say 367.4 kN. however it is subjected to just a factored shear force of 209 that was our design shear force 209 only let me show let me show that right uh, that is how i got 209 kilo uh, 209.48 kilonewton only therefore it can resist this built up section can resist up to <coughs> up to 367 kilonewton student therefore it is okay it is okay it is okay in shear strength or shear capacity check right now once it is okay let, let me also check whether is it a high shear or low shear right or um, as per the just now we have seen the check for high shear or low shear which is equal to 0.6 multiplied by VD however VD is equal to 367.4 now it works out 220.44 upon substitution because 0.6 multiplied by 367 is 220.44 however the factored shear force to which the beam is subjected is 209.48 kN only however this can resist uh, 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 up to 367 out of which 60% of that is equal to 220 therefore 209.48 factored shear force is just less than just less than 220.04 uh, sorry 220.44 kilonewton just less than therefore it is a low shear means the web is under low shear and you need not check for the web buckling the web buckling right now that is a conclusion student right once it is uh, okay then let us uh, find out is it okay in the uh, flexor criteria also right whether it can carry the, that much of flexor uh, or bending strength or not right hence the next heading is check for the design bending strength md is equal to just now we have seen that formula md is equal to beta b multiplied by zp f i divided by gamma m naught should be less than or equal to 1.2 ze f i divided by gamma m naught as per the page 53 let me revisit that right page number 53 right as per this uh, formula right as per this formula for laterally uh, supported beams laterally supported beams right mm. as this this formula student md is equal to beta b zp fi divided by gamma m naught and it should be less than 1.2 uh, fi ze divided by gamma m naught for simply supported beams right now let me uh, substitute into this uh, formula uh, now i'll get from the first one as uh, uh, beta b is equal to 1 and zpz just now we have calculated that 1568.29 10 to the power 3 and 250 divided by 1.1 that whole divided by 10 to the power 6 to convert in terms of kilonewton meter which is 356.43 kilonewton meter however it is subjected to just a uh, factored bending moment of 348.25 kilonewton therefore 356 is just greater than 348 therefore it is okay just miss almost we can say that the proposed section is a economized section right the stresses in the extreme fiber will reach almost right to the uh, optimum level right now i need to check even this second check also for which i require what is the uh, uh, moment of inertia what is the moment of inertia and what is the elastic section modulus therefore the moment of inertia about the major axis of bending izz for the built up section is equal to moment of inertia of the built, uh, beam alone is um, uh, rolled steel beam section plus moment of inertia of the plates about this zz axis therefore it now is given by this uh, form, uh, formula that izz that of the beam plus two such uh, moments of inertia of the plates about its own axis transferred using the parallel axis theorem 
uh, area of the plates b multiplied by tp multiplied by h square approximately h square therefore substituting the numeric values now i'll get 15521.7 10 to power 4 is the amount of inertia about the zz axis of the rolled steel beam plus two times uh, area of the plate sorry the section mar uh, mar uh, section modulus of the plates about its own axis is equal to 200 multiplied by 8 cubed by 12 which is transferred using parallel axis theorem to the cg of the compound section right using this eight uh, area 200 multiplied by 8 at a perpendicular distance of 300 plus 8 by 2 right by 2 whole square by 2 whole square therefore that now works out say 25770 Seven approximately centimeter to the power four. Therefore, the section modulus uh, of the compound section or built-up section is nothing but the amount of inertia that divided by extreme fiber distance. Therefore, extreme fiber distance is nothing but this 366 divided by two. This 366 divided by two because that extreme fiber is that a distance of one. Uh, I think 188. Right. Therefore, now I'll get uh, that result. And therefore, upon substitution, now I'll get uh, uh, 25,776.5 into power four divided by 366 by two. It works out say uh, 1,408.55 into power three mm cube. Mm cube. Therefore, this MD as per the uh, second uh, second check. Actually, it is a check student that MD, which was already calculated as 356.43, should be less than this 1.2 multiplied by uh, 1,408.55 into power three multiplied by 250 divided by 1.1 divided by 10 to the power 6. Therefore, this value works out say 348.15. However, 356.43 kilonewton meter is just less than 343.15 kilonewton meter. Therefore, it is okay. However, if I get this result, let us say as 396.43 student. However, 396.43 is greater than 384.15. Therefore, not acceptable. Therefore, you restrict this 396.43 to an upper bound value of 384 only please make note of this student right therefore here i am okay hence uh, my design the bending strength of the built up section is 350 356.43 kN which is greater than which is greater than the factored bending moment of 348.25 kN meter therefore it is okay once it is okay then even i need to check check for web buckling check for web buckling however Uh, because this depth to thickness of the web which is 37.9 which is less than 67 no web uh, shear buckling check is required however i'm just explaining this if at all it is required then how it need to be done as per this class 8.7.3.1 page number 67 let me revisit that page number 67 of ia 800 right 67 right therefore This is what uh, that uh, page number 67 should enter the web bearing check. Web bearing check. Load carrying uh, web stiffener should be provided where compressive forces applied through the flanges by uh, loads or reactions uh, exceed the buckling strength FC FCDW of the unstiffened web. Please make a note. Calculate using this uh, um, following. The effective length of the web for evaluating the slenderness ratio is calculated as per this class 8.7.1.5. The area of the cross section is taken as B1 plus N1 multiplied by thickness of web, where B1 is the width of this uh, uh, bearing uh, base plate or bearing plate, right? Is already given the problem as 150 mm, uh, and N1 is the dispersion of the load through the web at an inclination of 45 degree. Let me show this, right? How it will be dispersing? Uh, let me show this, right? At an inclination of 45 degree, right? Let me uh, see, right? This actual uh, buckling. Uh, at the uh, support student right at the support right however if i take a uh, cross section right it is a lateral lateral torsional buckling of the uh, entire cross section lateral torsional buckling of the entire cross section right however if right if i take uh, a section at the support that is how this web is buckling as if uh, it is uh, like a column right like a column and these flanges are acting as if the supports for it The flanges are acting as if the supports, right? And it is as if fixed in between these. Therefore, the web is buckling like this at the support. Even the same will be the case if at all it is subjected to a concentrated load in the um, elsewhere in the mid span of the beam also, right? Therefore, this load, this load uh, is now 
uh, there over a uh, bearing plate of width B1 and uh, it is uh, transferred at an inclination of 45 degree up to the neutral axis over a uh, width of N1. Therefore, therefore, here this is the compression zone is having a width of B1 plus N1 width. If at all it is there uh, at the end, at the end. However, if at all, uh, sorry, uh, let me show this right. Uh, another uh, schematic student, right? not this one, right? Uh, not this one, right? Let me go quickly, right? Yes, this one, right? If, if I, uh, right, this is what, <coughs> if uh, this I have just now explained, B1 plus N1 at an inclination of 45 degree, if at, uh, at intermediate location, if load is applied, then obviously it transfers on either side at an inclination of 45 degree, therefore, then the width need to be calculated in the buckling of this, buckling of this web, buckling of the web at the neutral axis neutral axis is equal to b1 plus 2n1 b1 plus 2n1 right once uh, you understood this uh, buckling how it will happen now let us see the numeric substitution at a quicker pace right therefore already um, assuming the width of the stiff bearing on the flange b1 is equal to 100 mm 100 mm right um, then the dispersion load at an inclination of 45 degree, N1 is equal to H by 2, right? 350 by 2 is equal to 175 mm. Therefore, the cross sectional area of, uh, for the buckling, AB is equal to B1 plus M1, N1 multiplied by thickness of the web, 100 plus 175 multiplied by 8, it works out at 2200 mm square. And also, if I go to this uh, class 8.7.1.5, page number 66, let me go to that page number 66, student, right? Uh, 66, yes, 66. Yes, that is the uh, previous page itself, right? Yes, that is how the dispersion will be happening at an uh, inclination of 45 degree at the support, at the support like this, whereas for intermediate locations on either side at 45, 45 degree or that B1. Therefore, now this code uh, class 8.7.1.5 for buckling resistance of the stiffener, it says that the effective length of the intermediate transfer stiffeners uh, used for the calculation of the buckling resistance if, if FQD should be taken as 0.7 times the effective length of the stiffener. Even it is equal to KL is equal to 0.7 L for flanges which are restrained against rotation in the plane of the stiffener by the other structural elements or it is equal to KL is equal to L when flanges are uh, not restrained. Therefore, as per this now I will say 0.7 the effective length for calculation of this effective length. Now I will say that the effective length of the web of this web is equal to 0.7 multiplied by D. This D is already calculated in the previous step as 303.2. Therefore, it now works out say 312.24, which will be buckling, right? Therefore, the mode of inertia of this web under buckling is equal to I effective is equal to B1 T1 B1 T cubed by 12 and area of this web is equal to A effective is equal to B1 T. Therefore, the minimum radius of variation, right? is equal to R min is equal to square root of I um, mode of inertia divided by area. Substituting now I get B1 T1 cubed by 12 divided by B1 T. It works out say thickness of the web divided by 12. Therefore, the thickness of the web is 8 divided by root 12 means 2.3 mm only approximately. Therefore, the standardized ratio, actual standardized ratio uh, for this buckling lambda is equal to KL by R which is which is now say 212.24 divided by 2.3. It is around 92.2 year student. Therefore, now, uh, you please see that uh, this is a uh, built up section. Therefore, if I go to this page number 44 of IES 800, let me go to the page number 44, right? 44, yes, I'm there in page number 44. This is not just rolled steel section, but this is a built up section, student, right? Like this, right? For built up sections, for built up section about any axis, the buckling class is C. As per this, as per this table 10, as per this table 10, and there is IAS 800 2007 table 10. This built up section about any axis, it is buckling classes C. Therefore, once I decide that, then I'll go to uh, this IAS 800 uh, uh, table 9C, page number 42, for FI is equal to 250. Let me go to that uh, page number 42, student. Let me uh, revisit uh, page number 42, yes, previous pages, right? This is uh, page number 42, 42, for buckling class C, yes, this is a, uh, not this one, right, yes, table 9C, design compressor stress FCD for uh, column buckling, column black, uh, buckling uh, class C, column buckling class C, therefore, for FI is equal to 250, for FI is equal to 250, 
Now, I have just calculated the slenderness ratio. What is the slenderness ratio? Let me check. That slenderness ratio is uh, 92.25. Therefore, I do have first slenderness ratio lambda is equal to FCD uh, is equal to 121, and uh, for lambda is equal to 100, FCD is equal to 107. 107. Let me show that, right? Let me show lambda 90, lambda 90 and 250. Therefore, 121 and 107 respectively for lambda is equal to 90 and 100 respectively. Therefore, now we'll interpolate for the required standard ratio 92.28. It is equal to how much? Therefore, the design completes us upon interpolation. It now works out 121 minus 121 minus 107 divided by 10 over a difference of 2.28 is equal to how much? It works out say 117.8 MPA. Therefore, the buckling strength of the web FW is equal to FCD multiplied by AB, which is 117.81 multiplied by uh, 2200 divided by 10 to power 3, which is equal to 259.18 kilo Newton is the buckling strength. However, it is subjected to a factored shear force of 209.48 kilo Newton only, means it will not buckle if a load more than 259.18 kilo Newton is applied, then only it will buckle, right. However, this was already um, not required, but nevertheless we have carried out that check as per this uh, class, um, as per this class 8.7.3.1. That was not required, but nevertheless we have uh, carried out, uh, presuming that if at all is required, how it need to be done. Therefore, it is okay in buckling web buckling check. It is okay. Now, once it is okay, then I'll uh, proceed with the next check as uh, check for web bearing or web crippling. Web bearing or web crippling. Therefore. However, um, at uh, this intersection of the flange with the web, intersection of the flange with the web, once a factored shear force is transmitted through this flange to the web. However, if I see right, the bearing area of this web is this much only at this intersection. Hence, whether it can take this much of load or not, whether it can bear or not, right? If it is not able to bear, that is how it, a local local uh, bending will happen that is what called the web web crippling web crippling or web crimpling therefore or it is failing in web bearing means it is not able to bear this much of load at the intersection of the flange with the web right that is what uh, the web crippling check student therefore as per this class IIS attended 2007 uh, uh, class 8.7.4 page number 67 let me go to that page number 67 <coughs> Sorry, right? Page number 67. Yes, I am there in page number 67, wherein just now we have seen uh, this web bearing. Um, and uh, Sorry, this web bearing, right? Therefore, bearing stiffness should be provided. Bearing stiffness should be provided for webs, for webs um, where the forces applied through the flanges by loads or reactions exceeding the local capacity of the web. At its connection of the flange FW is equal to FW is equal to B1 plus N2 multiplied by thickness of the web multiplied by FYW divided by gamma M0, where B1 is the stiff bearing uh, plate width and N2 is the length uh, obtained by dispersion through the flange to the web junction at a slope of 1 is to 25, 1 is to 25 to the plane of the flange. Let me show this uh, schematically also, student, right? <coughs> like this. Sorry, not this one, right? Yes, this one, right? Therefore, that is how the web bearing uh, failure at the intersection of the flange with the web at the support as well as at the intermediate location where concentrated load is put, then a local kink at the intersection of the flange with web will happen. This is what called the web crippling or web crimpling or web bearing failure, web bearing failure. Therefore, that will happen over uh, uh, a depth which is given by this slope 1 is to 2.5. Therefore, over a thickness of the flange TF plus root radius, root radius like this, right? Therefore, till that uh, at the end of the root radius means rest of the part of, of the, the web, web is purely vertical. vertical. Here, Here are root purely vertical. Vertical, vertical part, part of this web, web like this, right? right? Therefore, that, that now works out at a dispersion of 1 or 2.5 means this height, this height is equal to 2.5 multiplied by this thickness of the flange plus root radius R1. Root radius R1, right? That is the entire width of the dispersion uh, of this load from this base plate or bearing plate is B1 plus N2. P1 plus N2. Let me substitute the numeric values into this formula. Therefore, now I'll 
uh, we already assumed in the previous uh, step as uh, we built up this uh, bearing plate as 100 mm student B1 is equal to 100 mm. Therefore, uh, length of this dispersion at the slope of 1 to 2.5 is equal to n to 2.5 multiplied by the thickness of the plate plus uh, radius root radius, right? Uh, 2.5 multiplied by 11.4 plus 12 plus 12. That works out say 58.5. Therefore, the web bearing or crippling strength is equal to FW is equal to B1 plus N2 multiplied by thickness of the web FYW divided by gamma M0, right? Or say 100 plus 58.5. Multiplied by thickness of the web 8, multiplied by 250 divided by 1.5 divided by 10 to the power 3. It works out say 288, 288.18 uh, uh, kilonewton, kilonewton is the uh, bearing strength, bearing strength, whereas it is just greater than the shear force to which it is subjected. It is subjected to only just 209.48. Therefore, web bearing or web crippling will not happen like this. Web crippling will not happen. Therefore, it is okay in web crippling check also, right? Once it is okay, now it is, uh, it is okay in all the limit state of strength. Whether is it okay in limit state of deflection, which is limit state of serviceability also, right? Limit state of serviceability also, right? That is all. Hence, the limit uh, state of serviceability, right? Um, uh, checks, right? Uh, check for limit state of serviceability or check for uh, the deflection, right? Uh, however, already the uh, factor load is calculated, therefore, the service load W is equal to that factor load WU, which is 63 as the intensity of the UDL, that divided by factor of safety for the loads is equal to 1.5. Therefore, it now works out to 42 kN per meter only, right? However, as per this uh, table 6 of IS 800, page number 31. 31. Let me go to the page number 31 student of IS 831. Uh, Just bear for a moment. 31. Mm, yes, I am there in page number 31. Deflection limits. Deflection limits table 6, right? Uh, this is not an industrial building, right? Uh, because there is no mention. I am assuming it to be other type of building and vertical deflection only under live loads. Floor to roof. Floor to roof, right? Uh, the elements are uh, not susceptible for cracking. I am assuming that it is not susceptible for cracking. Therefore, the permissible, the permissible uh, maximum deflection uh, ma or ma permissible deflection is uh, spanned by 300. You please see this, right? Spanned by 300. Therefore, now span is already given in the problem, right? Uh, right. Therefore, if I substitute the permissible or maximum deflection, y max is equal to delta is equal to L by 300. Uh, 6500 divided by 300, it works out at 21.67 mm only. However, what is the actual uh, maximum deflection? However, we already know from strength of material, if it already is subjected to UDL, and if the beam is simply supported, even that is assumption, right? Therefore, the maximum deflection is 5 by 384 WL to the power 4 by EI. I is IZZ. Therefore, substituting the numeric values 5 by 384 multiplied by 42 is a service load multiplied by span 6500 uh, to the power 4 divided by 2 into Young's modulus of the steel. Uh, sorry, uh, Young's, modulus of, uh, Young's modulus of the steel is 2, uh, 2 into the power 5 divided by IZZ. IZZ, motor of inertia about the major axis. Just now we have calculated in the previous step, right? Motor of inertia about the major axis is calculated, right? Um, this value, right? This value I am recalling, right? 25,776 approximately. Therefore, about the major axis, because it is bending about the major axis only, that multiplied by 10 to the power 4, it works out, say, just 18.93 mm only, which is less than the permissible value of 21.67. Therefore, it is also okay in check for deflection, check for deflection. Therefore, once it is okay, therefore, my assumed section, what I assumed section, right? Student, that have assumed IS, sorry, uh, ISWB 350 at a rate of 558.19 with a flange plate of 200 by 8 mm, 200 by 8 mm as my final section, as my final section, right? That is my final section, should it like this, right? Therefore, that is my final section. Hence, because it is okay in the shear check, as well as it is okay in the bending, bending strength also, and it is also okay in shear strength, as well as it is okay in third one as web buckling check, and fourth one is web bearing strength, web bearing strength, therefore, and the last check is, it is also okay in the 
limit state of serviceability deflection check also therefore this is my final section hence provide is w is wb350 at a rate of 558.19 with a cover plate with a cover plate of um, 200 by 8 mm as shown in this figure as shown in this figure that figure i'm showing as well as i'm showing this um, the front as well as the uh, side view also right and that is how the design problem student i hope you enjoyed the discussions what we had in today's class right uh, if you have really enjoyed the discussions right and that is how uh, uh, we have designed it don't forget to click like share subscribe comment and turn on notification to our youtube channel we will meet in the next class with analysis and design of roof process the theory as well as the problems right till then bye bye students